Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. Summer has finally arrived and it's put me in the mood for making a fun and colourful project. In fact, today you've got three. So in today's video, I'm going to be making fun, colourful resin ice lollies using my J-Diction epoxy resin and UV resin. And then I will be making three different projects using those ice lollies. If that sounds like fun to you, stay tuned and enjoy the video. Right then, the first thing I'm going to do is adapt my silicon mould and I will explain a little bit more about why I'm doing that in just a moment, but because what you're seeing now is me measuring out the silicon. That's what I'll tell you about first. So I'm measuring out about 40 grams of part A and 40 grams of part B of my pure mold from Resin Pro and giving it a good mix. This is measured by weight, not volume. So the lollipop mold I'm using today is from Amazon and it was just the perfect size for what I wanted. And the problem is it's for lollipops, not for resin. <laughs> and so the inside of it is not shiny, it's matte. And we'll have to deal with that a little bit later on because you'll see what happens. But other than that, it's perfect mold for me and I need to adapt it because I want my finished ice lollies to be standing on the surface at an angle as though they've partly melted onto the surface. So I had two options. I could make a full ice lolly without adapting the mould and then chop off the end at an angle with a saw. But that sounded a little bit too much like hard work and also a little bit wasteful. I didn't want to be wasting part of the ice lolly and more resin. So I decided to adapt the mould by pouring in some silicon into the bottom at an angle. Right then, so because I wanted my silicon just to be at the bottom of the mould and I didn't want it dripping down the sides, I decided to put my silicon into a piping bag so that I could get the piping bag right down to the bottom and squeeze the silicon out. That way I was hoping I wouldn't get any silicon on the sides of the ice lolly mould. And it worked fairly well. I did get a few little bits, but it was okay. You couldn't really tell. So before adding my silicon, I propped up the ice lolly mould so it was at the right angle. Doesn't really matter what, you know, what exact angle you do it at. It's up to you. But yeah, it was just a shallow box that I used here. And then it was time to squeeze in the silicon. And I repeated the process for two more of the ice lollies. I decided to have three done at an angle and three just full ones so that I had the option in, you know, in future. In fact, in today's video, I did plan to just do three angled ones, but I ended up doing some full ones as well, which I'm glad about because as you'll see later on, I used the full ones and the angled ones. So once I'd added about an inch in silicon in the bottom of three of those, it was time to leave it to cure and I left it until the next day. Right then, it's the next day and time to start adding the resin. Now, I wanted mine to be stripy and because of that, I needed to know how much to pour for each layer. And so I made myself a little guide. I placed a coffee stirring stick inside the mould and put my ruler over the top and then just drew a line where the ruler met the coffee stirring stick. And then I knew the exact height of the um, cavity. I measured up to the line, divided it by six and marked out those lines onto the coffee stirring stick because I wanted six stripes. Right, the epoxy resin I'm using today is the 4-hour demold resin from J Addiction and it's perfect for this job because I'm doing lots of layers and it means I don't have to wait a long time between each layer. In fact, I didn't even have to wait 4 hours because it doesn't need to be completely solid before you do the next layer. As long as it's a little bit firm, 
that's fine. And it was a really hot day, which made it cure even faster. So I think I had about three hours between layers. This resin needs to be measured by volume. And so I poured out 50 millilitres of part A and 50 millilitres of part B. It was a guess because obviously I wasn't really sure exactly how much I would need. But that actually turned out to be just about spot on. So once both parts were measured out, I stirred it slowly for around two minutes. Right, I decided on rainbow colours for my ice lollies. And so my first colour which I'm going to make is indigo. And because I planned on having the melting effect with my angled ice lolly, the first colour, which would have been the violet, well, the last colour in the rainbow, but the violet will be the puddle. So that's why I'm starting with indigo and not having seven stripes, just having six, if that makes sense. <laughs> so to make my indigo, indigo obviously in the rainbow is a mixture of the violet and the blue. So I've got a little bit of violet pigment from vitriol, vitriol transparent pigment, and it's the violet. I'm going to add a little bit of that and a little bit of blue. And then I added just a little bit at a time into the cavity of the mould and kept on using my wooden stick as a guide to see if I'd reached the first mark. It was a bit tricky for me because I was filming and my head would have been getting in the way. So I couldn't really see what I was doing very well. And, you know, the, um, the layers, the stripy layers didn't work out to be as evenly spaced as they would have done if I hadn't been filming. But hopefully it's giving you an idea. And the other thing that I did after a while was I realised I could put it onto my weighing scales as I was pouring it and, you know, making sure it was the right depth with my guide that I made. And once I'd done that for one layer, I knew exactly how much weight I needed. And for the next layers, which I'm not going to show you because it's the same thing again and again in different colours, but for the next way, layers, I could weigh it instead of using that guide because I obviously I'd worked out how much I needed. Right, we've jumped forward in time, about three hours, and I've just poured the blue layer. I did 20 grams of each, as I was mentioning just now. It was easier to weigh it. And I've got my lollipop sticks ready. I decided to give my lollipop sticks a coat of spray varnish before adding them to the resin just to avoid having the resin bleeding up the grain of the wood, which it can tend to do with wood. Now, this mould is really good because it comes with a lid that goes on the top and you just need to slot your sticks through and it keeps them into position. The only thing is you'd think that's nice and simple, wouldn't you? But no, I used it upside down. <laughs> Typical, trust me. But it was my first time using it. <laughs> Anyway, it doesn't really matter that it was upside down. Um, if it was the right way up, it would have slotted onto the other part really nicely. But I didn't really need it to. It still kept the sticks in position, so it wasn't really a problem. Um, I just felt a bit daft, that was all. <laughs> so once that layer was dry, I just carefully took the lid off that was holding the lollipop sticks in position and repeated the process for all the other colours and let them cure and then it was time to get them out the mould. Right, I knew that getting these out of the mould might not be easy. So I got a big bowl of water. I pulled away the edges of the mould from the resin a little bit and then tried to just squeeze some dish soap down the side and get a little bit of water down there as well. And it actually wasn't as difficult to get them out of the mould as I thought it would be. Because once you've got the soap and a bit of water down there and kind of got the um, water flowing down the sides, it just slides out all of a sudden. It just needs a little bit of manipulation to get, you know, the water going around the sides and the soap going around the sides. And once it does, it loosens and you can actually pull it out or push it from the bottom and then they just pop out really easy 
which was a big relief because I thought I was going to have a massive struggle. Anyway, when they're wet, you can see how bright the colours are, can't you? It looks really good. The only problem is, which is what I was talking about before, is that the inside of the moulds are not shiny. And once those dried out, they were a little bit dull looking. So I needed to come up with a plan to take away the dullness, which didn't involve loads of sanding and polishing because that's not my cup of tea at all. Although saying that I did need to do a little bit of sanding just around the top edge because whenever you use resin in a mould, unless you dome it, you will usually get a bit of a ridge as you can see here and I didn't want any sharp bits even though I'm going to be filling that later on with UV resin and the ridge does help to keep the UV resin in position I didn't want to cut myself with the sharp edges so I just gave it a little bit of a sand with my nail file right then I don't know if you can tell but the one on the right I took out into the garden and I sprayed it with some spray varnish and it wasn't as matte as before because the one on the left isn't sprayed. So it did help and I can see a difference there. But it wasn't as glossy as I was, would like it to be. But I did have another plan which I will try out in a minute. But first of all, let me show you how I made my first project which was the fridge magnet. And for my magnet I'm using these super strong round magnets which I got from Amazon as you can see one of my tools just automatically stuck to it they're very very strong and I've got my Dremel here and I'm just trying to drill um, holes just the right size to slot the magnets into and I'm keeping it behind the stick so you won't see them from the front and it was a bit of trial and error I started off with my drill and then tried out the other tool that I found in the toolbox that comes with the Dremel. I'm not sure what its real purpose was. <laughs> you get all these little bits when you get a Dremel. And they all look very interesting. But sometimes I use things which I don't know what they're really for. But they work anyway. And so the little tool that I used after my drill. I really don't know what it was. But it did the trick. <laughs> So once I'd finished making the holes, I washed it and dried it and it was time to add the magnets. And for that I'm using UV resin. It's the J-Diction Low Viscosity UV resin that I'm using. Just a regular one will work, but because I've got the Low Viscosity one, I decided to do that because it's a lot thinner and I thought it might be a, just a bit easier to work with. Uh, but yeah, like I say, you don't need to use the Low Viscosity the regular J Diction UV resin will also do the trick nicely. So I filled the hole with some UV resin. I popped the magnet in there, put a little bit more over the top and smoothed it down and then put it under the lamp for two minutes. Right then, both the magnets are in place and it's time for my plan that I had up my sleeve. I decided to see if I could attach the lolly pop, or ice lolly. <laughs> I keep calling them lolly pops, they're not ice lollies. See if I could adapt my cup turner to fit the ice lolly in there. So I decided to chop up some um, pool noodle, just some foam padding type stuff, chop it up so that it would fit on the inside of the cup turner piece that you can see there. And so it was just a case of carving it down with my knife. Do be careful, this is an adult job. If you're not an adult, don't do this. Uh, yeah, chop it down so that it would fit and then slice down the middle on the inf once it was in or before you put it in might be even easier. Slice it in half and then put it on, you know, in the inside. I tried slicing it once it was in position and it would have actually been easier to do it you know, before putting it in. But anyway, you should be able to squash it in there because you want it to be nice and tight. And once you've done that, you slot your lolly in there and you're ready to coat it with resin. 
Before applying the resin, it's always best to clean it down with some isopropyl alcohol, which is what I'm doing here. I'm just spraying it on and giving it a good wipe on both sides because any fingerprints that you've got on there, that when you've been touching it and looking at it, they will have left a little bit of oil from your fingers and the resin won't stick to it. So give it a good clean first. And then you can start applying your resin. So I put a silicon mat down to protect my surface, mixed up some of the 4-hour epoxy resin from J Diction, just the same one as I used before. Actually, I mixed up more than I needed. You only need a tiny bit. And then just pour it on and rub it with your gloved hand. Please make sure you wear gloves. <laughs> and yeah, just distribute it evenly, as evenly as you can, all over, whilst your cup turn is turning, and then leave it. And hopefully, then you'll get a nice, even finish. Now, as you can see, the finish is extremely glossy. It's exactly the glossiness that I wanted. But you will also be able to see it's a little bit patchy in places. And I think that is because I had to turn it off before it was fully finished. Because I was going out and I didn't want to leave it running while I was out. Um... Yeah, I think if I'd have been able to keep it going until it was fully cured, it would have been all right. I did try again with another one and I had the same problem. But with the other one, it was just because it was late at night and I needed to go to bed and I couldn't sleep thinking about the fact that I'd left it going and it would be going all night and I didn't want the motor to overheat. <laughs> so both of the ones I did, the same thing happened. But I think if I tried it again and gave it, did it at a good time where I could stay in and le just leave it on, it would have been really good. So I kind of, yeah, I kind of gave up with that idea at the time. I did two. I did one of the full ones and one of the half ones. But the rest of them I spray varnished. And now I'm waffling and not keeping up with the video. Right, as I mentioned before, here, what I'm doing is just adding a little bit of UV resin just to the top to dome it a little bit. I think it was the high viscosity one that I used. Uh, the high viscosity one domes really well, and so I thought that would be perfect for the top. And I'm just using a skewer here just to make sure all those dull bits where I sanded it are just completely covered. And then I can put it under the UV lamp. And then everything has a nice finished finish without that nasty bit at the bottom. So here's the fridge magnet in position. And I think it looks really good. I'm really happy with it. And it goes nicely with that nice fun picture of my granddaughter, Millie. Right, we're on to project two, the quickest and easiest of the three. And for this, I'm using J Diction's high viscosity UV resin because it's perfect for doming. And what we're making now is the puddle for the melting lolly. I'm just squeezing some into a silicon cup and then adding some of the, what was it, violet. Yeah, <laughs> the violet pigment that you saw me use at the beginning the vitreol violet transparent pigment. Just a little bit, because obviously there's not much resin in there. And giving it a good mix and then pouring it onto my silicon mat until it makes a nice little puddle shape. And then carefully placing the ice lolly into the middle. And as you can probably see, this is the other one that I put on the cup turner that turned out quite patchy as well. I think I kind of get away with that because of the nature of what it's supposed to be. It wouldn't be like perfect shape, would it? Because it's melting. So <laughs> I just about get away with the fact that it was a bit of a patchy finish. But I do, I do like the glossiness of it. It's better than the spray varnished one, in my opinion. Uh, just need to perfect the cup turning process. I gave it two minutes on both sides under the UV lamp. So two minutes on the top, then turned it over and held it under to do the underside for two minutes. And here it is finished. And I really like it. I think it's really cute. It's just an ornament, isn't it? I suppose it doesn't really have a function. That one just looks cool. 
And now we're on to my last project, which is a kind of memo holder or a photo holder. And for this, I'm using air dry clay and I'm going to be using it on a ceramic tile because it's nice and flat and easy to move out of the way while it dries. Now, when I saw my uh, clay on the shelf, I thought it was a full packet then took it out and realised it had already been opened and found out that it wasn't quite as good as it used to be. It had dried out a bit, but it still worked. It just needed a little bit of heavy handedness to <laughs> squeeze it right down. It was quite dry, but I managed it. And anyway, what I'm doing is making a mound with it and it's going to be covered in sand. So it just looks like a pile of sand. So once I've squeezed it around and got it just about how I wanted it, I put the lolly and my memo clip into position to just check that I've got it where I wanted it because I wanted the holes in the right place. And then once I'd got the position just right, I took the lolly out and just put a normal lollipop stick in there so I didn't get paint on my lolly. And then I left it to dry on my windowsill, ready for the next step. Now, if you were doing it, make sure it's completely dry, won't you? I didn't. I was rushing because I was making the video. And so it was dry on the outside, but still a little bit soft on the inside. But for the purposes of demonstration, it worked just fine. Anyway, what I'm doing here is painting it with some sand coloured acrylic paints. And once that's completely covered, I just leave it to dry, ready for the next step. Right, once the paint was dry, it was time to add the sand. I poured some PVA glue onto the clay mound and brushed it all over before sprinkling sand over the top. When the sand had dried, I brushed off all the excess and noticed there were a couple of patches that I'd missed. So I just repeated the process again, just exactly the same, and then it was ready. So once again, I used my craft knife to loosen it around the bottom because obviously I'd been using paint and PVA glue. So it all kind of connected the tile to the mound, but that was okay. You just need to get your craft knife underneath very carefully and just slide it around the edges and then it will come off. Now, as I said before, I hadn't waited for it to fully dry out because I needed to get my video made. And so now it's off the tile, it can still dry out because that bottom part is still exposed to the air. I'm not going to seal it in this video because obviously it does need to dry out. But if I had done it the correct way, at this stage I would probably add some adhesive felt to protect my surface wherever I'm putting it. So there's some messy bits around the edges and all I did was use my scissors to tidy it up. I decided I wanted to have that photograph of Millie in the uh, memo clip that's in the mound. So I decided to put Millie's name onto the ice lolly that's going to be in there. And I thought it would go really nicely with the photograph. And so I cut out a decal on my Cricut of Millie's name in a colour that I thought would go really nicely. And just placed it on smoothed it down and carefully peeled off the transfer tape. I'm afraid I'm having to keep my instructions quite brief because there's so much in this video. I didn't want to make it too long. So yeah, I w that's why I didn't show you how I made the decal. But it's vinyl and I did it in my Cricut. Right, the eagle-eyed amongst you might have noticed that that memo clip is shorter than it was before. I realised that it was just too long, so I cut it shorter. But a word of warning, I will be putting a link to these in my video description. But they are very hard to cut. I used my wire cutters and it took me a long time to get through it to shorten it. So that's just a little word of warning. <laughs> anyway, once I got the photo and the ice lolly in there, I felt that there was something missing. And so I decided to attach some shells all around it with my glue gun just to make it look a little bit more interesting. And yeah, it made a massive difference. I liked it so much more once it had shells on. And so here it is all finished and I love it to bits. And there's the fridge magnet. 
and also the melting lolly which I think looks really cool so yeah I'm very happy with it and I think Millie will love them too Right, we've come to the end of the video now and I'm really pleased I managed to fit all my information into there, even if it was a little bit condensed. So what do you think of the finished pieces? It's very fun and summery looking, isn't it? I really like it all. I hope I've inspired you to have a go yourself. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed and you would like to, please do. And I will see you again next week. Thank you for watching and bye for now.